Hello everybody, welcome back to We The Revolution. I'm back, Boob, and this is The Only Way Is Beastly. Uh, so today we are presented on Day 5, still on Act 1 for Liberté. The new case in front of us. The last video, of course, was the priest that wasn't a priest, and he was sentenced to jail. This one's surprisingly interesting. It leads on from the um, strong force used by the National Guard, so let's have a look at this. So, in the dock sits Matteo Burel, can't pronounce the name, that's my best guess. He's there. Uh, commander in chief, well, the former commander in chief of the National Guard. The defendant stands accused of causing the death of 34 people who took part in a demonstration against monarchic authority. If that's how I'm saying it right. So around 3 pm, two spontaneous groups of protesters stumbled upon each other in one of the streets leading to the Palace uh, Vidome. A quarrel broke out between the supporters and opponents of Citizen Capet, with both sides engaged in a heated argument. None of the involved parties managed to gain the upper hand, and they quickly resorted to name-calling and public threats. So soon after, a National Guard detachment led by the defendant arrived on the scene. According to the eyewitness testimony of Blaise Fawcett, Commander-in-Chief of um, Commander in Chief Matteo Burrell, stood himself between the two groups alone and attempted to talk sense into them. He was quickly shouted down by the protesters. A few of them vocally accused the Commander-in-Chief of violating their freedom of speech. A rock flew over Burrell's head. He then walked up to the regiment uh, that, until this point, had stood away from the crowds. The Commander-in-Chief then ordered them to load their muskets and aim at the protesters. He shouted to the mob that they should leave, which the people of France, of course, ignored. Then, as Fawcett testified, another rock barely missed his head. This time it managed to hit one of the soldiers in the chest, leaving him breathless for a moment. Burrell ordered the troops to fire. Bullets reached 34 people in total on both sides of the protest. During his arrest, Burrell tried to explain that he had the tribunal's opinion, which stated he could use force if needed. He tried to defend himself with similar opinions from the convention. Prosecutor Tinvale did not care for, the, for such explanations, and his fiery speech convinced the deputies to dismiss him. He is now trying to convince the judge to impose an additional punishment. So this is an interesting case right here, guys. So, uh, we can see uh, common folk and family want this man dead. And he has, I mean, a rock, yeah, fair enough, you go in, whack if you edge, you don't shoot him. Revolutionaries want him in prison, no one wants him acquitted. He isn't going to be acquitted, I think, at this rate. So, uh, there are some traps and there's nine questions to reveal. So, Commander-in-Chief's dismissal. Um, that could be the course of events, yeah. Causing death is the accusation. Protesters. Uh, oh, no, caught in a trap there, okay. The crowd's fervour. Let's try that one. Yeah, there we are, extenuating circumstances. Uh, the commander in chief's recklessness. Accusation, yeah. Freedom of speech is what he's been accused of there. Order to load the muskets. That's a course of events. Injured soldier. Is the defence. Uh, tribunal's opinion is also the defence. Commander in Chief's recklessness is the offender's personality. And there we are, we've got all the questions. Let's start the trial. So, defendant, introduce yourself. We all know who this villain is. Matteo Burrell, Commander in Chief of the National Guard, and shut up already. Let us proceed directly to the testimony. Summon the witness. Okay, Blaise Fawcett, Monsieur Le Judge, I'm a simple blacksmith. Citizen, do not conf do you confirm being a witness of the events that are uh, that do you confirm being a witness to the events that are the cause of our gathering today? Yes, I was a witness. I mean, I was there. I saw everything, and I'm ready to talk about it. Okay. <clears throat> Please tell us if you saw exactly how the accused acted during these events. Yes, of course, that's why I'm here. I saw it. The captain, he's a captain, right? Go on. He stood between the people and started yelling at them. If someone came up to him, he pushed them away and made threats, shaking fists. But I think he meant, well, why do you think that? I don't know, it's just a feeling of that. Oh, jury wants him dead already. Hmm. Who attacked first then, the crowd or the guard? <clears throat> I'd say the crowd. They threw something at that poor soldier. And after? Well, they started shooting. Wait, there was no order? 
I didn't hear any orders. It was loud and it all happened so fast. That's interesting. Is the condemned... Wow, that's a harsh question. I'll save that one for last if need be. Okay. Do you see yourself as a reckless commander? No, I think I'm calm most of the time. It comes with age and experience. Yet you're stood between two hostile groups without any guards. That indicates something quite different. It's called bravery. I would not send a regular soldier. I risk my own life and also hope that seeing a high-ranking officer would make them come to the senses. So did it not work? No, it had the opposite effect. There was no way I could have expected the outcome. I'm not going to keep reading out what the crowd is shouting because they're annoying me. Hmm. What words did you use when addressing that crowd? I asked them for a moment of silence and then when they were quiet, uh, why they were fighting. That's when the peace ended and both sides started throwing accusations. Maybe you shouldn't have intervened. Maybe you only agitated the crowd more. How? By asking for a moment of silence. Did you say anything else? I was trying to shout over the crowd. Someone accused me of being a spy trying to silence them and suppress their freedom of speech. Was that your aim? My aim was to prevent bloodshed. As you can see, it was impossible. Why did the citizens stand between the fighting groups? I know for a fact that you can <clears throat> decrease tension within, with reason and meditation, mediation even, of a third party. I was not involved with either of the groups. Wait, do you mean to say that you are not a supporter of the revolution? During these events, I was a soldier and an officer first and foremost. I could not allow myself the comfort of having political views. Why? The security of the people was the most important thing. Citizens from surrounding houses first, protesters second. Since we are far beyond these events, I take this lack of clear answer as evidence of your support for the monarchy. I've always remained loyal to France and her people. Hmm. Were you given a reason for your dismissal? Multiple reasons. I will not address all of them, but the one that wounded me the most was my supposed incompetence. You caused the death of many people have died during the revolution, and yet the murderers are members of this of the convention or judges of, of the tribunals. The accused choose his words more carefully. This is slander, a tool of the monarchist machine. Spare me your speeches. If you had any decency left in you, you would remain silent. If we let you go, would you go back to your duty? No, now I can see that being a scapegoat is the best I could have hoped for here. A deputy or a judge makes a mistake, so they convict a soldier. That is how it always been and how it will always be. Hmm. During your arrest, you said that you were given official documents issued by Monsieur the Judge. May I interrupt? That line of defence is pure nonsense. Why is that? I brought the document to myself. I brought the document myself to be signed by this judge. He signed it, he gave me the right to use force in case of immediate danger from the protesters. You killed 34 people. Would you rather there be hundreds of dead soldiers and protesters with the rest of them still fighting each other? I had good reason to use force and the fact that I am standing here only confirms that the judge present here and the deputies of the convention are merely looking for a scapegoat. Nonsense, the convention would never. Here is a document signed by Judge Alexis Fidel and the head of the tribunal, Raymond de, de Voyer. Two judges confirmed my right to use weapons. It was a recommendation for the convention so they could write up such a law. Then I recommended that you release me and sentence these judges to death instead. Hmm. So do you think that the order to load the muskets may have been issued too early? Why? Because it would have further aggravated the crowd that was already outraged? The people of Paris have an ugly history of impaling heads on pikes. I have a sizable mob before me that was quite obviously ready to attack us at any moment. No, the order was not issued too early. More than that, we should have started shooting as soon as we arrived instead of wasting our time trying to calm them down. So you believe? So, so you simply believe in brute force rather than diplomacy. If diplomacy had any chance of success in this situation, deputies of the convention would have been sent instead of the guard. Yet not one of them decided to show up. <clears throat> How was one of your short soldiers injured? He was hitting the chest with a rock. He fell and for a moment could not catch his breath. Did you try to calm the crowd after the incident? You must be joking. Why do you say that? They wanted blood, their own or ours. It does not matter, they just wanted it spilled. 
and you gave them what they wanted. I had good reason and a document in my hand. It was also responsible for the lives of my subordinates. Did that document come from God? Are you aware of the severity of the charges? You understand that 34 citizens were killed. Those that were killed were aggressors who dared to attack a soldier. All 34 of them? No, he was hit by a rock thrown by a single person, but before that another rock flew over my head, I had reason to believe that the mob would become violent. That's exactly why you were sent there, to prevent violence. And I did, several people died, but the rest of the citizens are safe. He's still a bastard then. <laughs> Jury want him dead. Only by a margin though. <sighs> he has overacted on this one. So, yeah. Jesus, I lose a lot there, don't I? He's definitely not going to quit, that's for sure. The jury want him dead. <clears throat> that much is evidence. It's clearly says right there. <sighs> he was rash. He overreacted way too quickly. He should have just arrested the one person that threw the rock and injured the soldier. Instead of killing 34 people and leaving a bloodbath. Kill him. Right, was his act a counter revolutionary in nature? No. Or was it? That's an interesting point, actually, because he was silencing their freedom of speech. They think he's counter revolutionary. Hmm. I don't believe it was counter-revolutionary in nature. I hereby sentence Matteo Burrell to death by guillotine. The souls of the victims may now rest in peace. Yep, I got it all right. Brilliant. Maybe I could win the heart of the crowd. Right, let's see if I can do a decent speech here. Let's speak to the common folk. Let's see if this works. Future generations will remember that we were not cowards. They will remember us delivering the punishments for such hideous crimes. Intrigued. Defendant. This individual spits in the face of Themis and the people. Justice will not accept such insults. Doubtful? Ooh. Manipulation again. Future generations will remember that we were not cowards and it does need to be done. Okay, so they're still doubtful. Aggression doesn't seem to be the key for this thing. Your scapegoat will die so that you can walk free. I wonder if your conscience will let you sleep at night.
There can be no more demeaning experience for the revolutionary Paris than the escape of Citizen Capet. He escaped, slipped right from their hands, and the revolution now seems feeble and weak. The people resemble a child that could be easily duped by anyone. However, the Republic quickly composed itself thanks to a postmaster and his people who were able to catch the fugitives escaping to Montmedy. Montmedy? Ordinary citizens led to the fall of a monarch. You will have a chance to save the Republic as well. For Citizen Capet, the f uh, Citizen Capet will face trial the tribunal tomorrow. You will choose how he will be remembered, as a traitor and a coward, or as an unlucky statesman. If it were for the present guards to decide, there would only be one outcome. Leave until the trial. I want him. <clears throat> hmm. What should we do? Don't fancy political debate. Yeah, let's go for a viola concerto. Day six. <clears throat> it is King Louis. All right, this is a perfect end to this video here. So, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more. I am actually quite enjoying this series from We the Revolution. Plenty more uh, crime cases to come. Uh, so, yep. Yeah. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, flick that bell end, help us get to a thousand subscribers before the end of the year. Catch you at the next criminal case.